Hello again, everybody. I'm Scott Casper, back with another edition of Takedown, your weekly source of what's trending in the world of wrestling. More than 15,000 fans tripped the turnstiles of Value City Arena to watch the third-ranked Buckeyes face the undefeated and number one ranked Nittany Lions. That, of course, took place on Friday. In a duel that featured 17 ranked wrestlers, Penn State opened up an early lead at 125, where true freshman Nick Suriano picked up six takedowns and tacked on two and a half minutes of riding time for a 19 Ford Tech over Jose Rodriguez. Ohio State bounced back at 133. They had an answer there. Top ranked Nathan Tomasello scored on five takedowns in the opening three minutes and added a pair of two point near falls to go up 14 4 against the of sophomore George Carpenter. Tomasello scored four in the second and third period to finish off the tech fall and tie the duel at five. 11th ranked Jimmy Gillibon swung the momentum back in PSU's favor with a second period takedown and a minute 17 of riding time to top the 15th ranked Luke Pletcher to score 5-3 at 141. We go to 149. Zane Rutherford improved to 16-0 on the year, securing four takedowns and two four-point turns for a lopsided 20-5 tech fall over the 5th ranked Micah George. Jason Nolf made it back-to-back -back bonus point wins at 57, trading takedowns with Anthony DiCarlo and then pinning the Bucks sophomore midway through the first period to put the Lions up by 14. Vincenzo Joseph ran out to an early five-point lead at 65. He scored a takedown and four back points against the Bucks. Cody Bircher. Bircher put together a solid ride to start the second, but gave up a reversal and a third-period escape, giving Joseph the major 11-1. True freshman Mark Hall hit an early takedown against Justin Krusevic in hit another high single to go up 4-1 in the first. Hall then hit three more takedowns in the second to go up 11-3 before tossing the Buckeyes senior to his back and locking up the pin at 5 minutes 21 seconds in the match. In the NCAA Finals rematch, we were looking for it. Sophomore Bo Nickel controlled Miles Martin from start to finish. He picked up three takedowns and a reversal for an easy 8-2 win at 84. Fourth rank, Colin Moore gave the Buckeyes their second victory of the duel at 97. He countered a third period shot by Matt McCutcheon for a 9-6 decision. Well, fresh off a gold medal performance overseas, Ohio State heavyweight Kyle Snyder did what he does, and that's win hit an early blow single against sophomore Nick Nevels and hit two more takedowns in the first to go up 8-3. Nevels chose to start down to start the second and escape to make it 8-4, but Snyder would connect on four more takedowns, adding two and a half minutes of riding time on his way to the major decision. In the end, the Buckeyes won the battle, but the Lions won the war 32-12, the final from Columbus. You know, we definitely have room to improve, and that's, that's exciting. I mean, that will never change, whether you're you know, returning national champ like Zane or a true freshman, like we have two in the lineup. We're, uh, we're getting ready for Illinois now. It's a Friday, um, a week from today. So it just keeps rolling, right? I mean, the, this wasn't the national championship by any means. I mean, dual meets are always important. Uh, obviously, they're, what they say, there are 15,000, 15,000 plus people out there, um, you know, and just getting bigger and bigger. There weren't such thing as uh, 15,000 uh, dual meet records 10 years ago or 15 years ago, right? I mean, this is, uh, you know, wrestling's doing great, being live on the Big Ten Network. Um, great match. I have, you know, an incredible team and a lot of talent, and, and we've got a great team, so um, it's good stuff. Our look back at a very busy weekend of collegiate wrestling continues. You're watching Takedown, thanks to Casey's General Stores. Casey's famous for pizza. Right now, get a free two liter with the purchase of any large pizza. Casey's, famous for pizza. Yellow Blue wants to show you global energy demands are expanding at an alarming rate. Power grids in the U.S. are aging while coal plants continue to close at record rates. Utility rates are at an all time high and there's no end in sight. If this concerns you, call Yellow Blue, delivering products and services that are not only green, but cost effective. You can be independent, safe, and secure. We'll show you how at yellowbluetech.com.
From time to time, Chris Bono has been known to pull a rabbit out of his hat. Well, he did so with Seth Gross, who picked up a pin, did Gross, and the 19th-ranked Jackrabbits edged out number 15-ranked Oklahoma Friday, 20-19. The Sooners took an early lead as Mike Longo scored a 9-1 major over Henry Pohlmeyer, but Alex Koster got SDSU on the board at 149 with a late four-point nearfall and an 11-9 upset over Jeffries. OU responded with back-to-back 5-3 decisions from Clark Glass at 57 and Yoans Mias at 165. But David Koster kept the Jacks alive with a 6-1 victory over Matt Reed. And then Martin Mueller tacked on a 7-5 decision over Andrew Dixon to pull SDSU within one. Well, a major decision from Nate Roder at 97 gave Chris Bono and company their very first lead of the duel. But it was short-lived as OU heavyweight Ross Larson scored a first-period pin over Alex Mackey. And Christian Moody, well, he picked up an 8-5 decision over Ben Gillette. Trailing now 19-13, heading into the final bout of the night. Seth Gross went on the mat and delivered. The second-ranked sophomore hit two takedowns in the opening frame and locked up his ninth pin of the year, giving SDSU the 1918 victory on criteria. That total team effort tonight, uh, proud of my guys, proud of, uh, you know, even in the guys in our loss. Uh, we went out there and fought, and a lot of guys that were far away, um, in September and October are closing the gap on these guys. So uh, excited for tonight, excited for um, our administration and our program uh, in, in a whole. Let's go back to the Big Ten. Sunday, third-ranked Iowa picked up their 21st consecutive conference road victory. From the Iowa Athletic Department, let's take a look at some of the sights and sounds from the Hawkeyes' victory over the 13th-ranked Gophers of Minnesota. On a good Sunday morning and welcome into the Sports Pavilion on the campus of the University of Minnesota up in Minneapolis. There's, There's a shot, shot right off the whistle by Short. And nice, Kimberer good round. Two, go behind and grabs the two. Point. Only 30 seconds left to go here. There's a shot right there by Gunther, single leg. He's got the leg up in the air. Two point takedown, Joey Gunther. Yes. I mean, it, it confirms what I think or what everyone thinks in the uh, wrestling that you're trying to be the best, so you got to beat the best to be the best. So you got to beat those ranked opponents. Feels good. Now Meyer reaches back, clears it out. Nice. Comes in on a shot. Comes nice. Oh, he's got back. his back. That was a two count. He got it. He, he got did. it. Stevenson just reaching back, basically hanging on to Sammy's tricep area, and that's preventing Sam from reaching across. Now he's able to bring that leg a little bit higher, and then reaches across, steps over, and gets the two, and then goes right into the suicide still the for the oh, he missed had the him. fall. Oh, he missed the fall. He's taking him straight back, and he's getting near falls now. He's getting his near falls. God, he's so powerful at that. Four out of the first five matches had bonus points. That was big, you know. They drew and. For reasons, and that everybody knows, and Gilman you know, got himself in a hole and dug himself out. Um, actually, uh, I was listening to a podcast the other day, and it was kind of military oriented. And the uh, first thing it talked about was uh, when you're in a firefight and casualties are occurring. Casualties don't matter. The only thing that matters is where the fire is coming from. And so I wasn't worried about the casualties, which were points, and I was just worrying about where the fire was coming from. And that was him. You know, pulling back, sucking back, getting those points. So I just had to, you know, get my wits and get out. And I knew once I got back on my feet, he wasn't going to take me down again. I could, you know, wear him out and then, uh, you know, look for that, that quick fall. Snap. Front head. Oh, look, he's over. over. Hey, he's he's over. over. He's, he's getting tight. Here. It's really, really tight. You You're going to see a fall here. here. You're going to see a fall. Gilman, trying to adjust. He's got a minute 11. Hops over to the near side, looking to cinch it up. Referee J.R. Johnson right down there. Gilman settling down. Oh! Thomas Gilman! Oh, Thomas Gilman! Woo! Oh, you betcha, baby! Lizak just plain ran out of gas. Ran out of gas. Gilman takes the ankle bands off, throws them in the air, gets booze from the entire crowd. Don't touch that dial. Our news continues after this quick timeout, brought to you in part by our friends at McBride Man. Wow, 40 years. Time really flies. Don't seem like it's been that long. It seemed like only yesterday that I started out route delivering it to the stores. For over 40 years, we're really proud to keep the same quality ingredients and not change our recipe. Help us celebrate our 40th anniversary by joining into our cookies recipe contest with a chance to win a Traeger Bronson 20 smoker. You can enter it on our Facebook page or cookiesbbq.com. Thanks for 40 years, and we'll see you in another 40 years. Cookie.
Now let's head to Pella, Iowa. Central College senior Jaime Miranda has spent a lifetime wrestling with adversity. Along with his sister Alexis, Miranda slept in bus stations and garages while their mother Ramona watched over them in a very rough section of Aberdeen, Washington. From NBC Nightly News, here's Harry Smith with this week's edition of Inspiring America, from homeless to college heavyweight. Jaime Miranda is a college wrestler. Few sports are more demanding and none are less glamorous. Slept on your own, then we picked the pace up. He's a senior at Central College in Pella, Iowa, my alma mater, Coach Eric Van Clay. I think the biggest thing with Jaime was a kid that everything in life had been an uphill challenge who just needed a break. When Jaime was little, his father walked out on him, his mom, and his sister in Washington State, where his mother struggled to provide. Sometimes we would have a car and we would uh, camp out in that for a while. You were homeless? Yeah. In high school, sports kept him off the streets. Soon, though, he learned his mother was dying of cancer. I had a great mother as like a hero and a protector. Jaime arrived yeah, on campus a with a hot head and a huge chip on his shoulder. I have some garbage cans that got their asses kicked because of Jaime Miranda. Jaime also learned bees in high school mean little in college. How hard has college been? <laughs> Tremendously hard. Every semester, I think about leaving. I've always told him point blank, quitting is just not an option for you. Um, I'm never going to give up on you. Central College is never going to give up on you, nor can you give up on yourself. Jaime sought and got help from professors. His teammates and even their parents embraced him too. Jaime is the biggest success story of my entire life. Snap him down, down, down! Jaime means 100 times more to me than winning the national title. He's a co-captain of the team this year, and when he graduates in the spring, he wants to work with kids like him. My message is going to be that there's like a way out and that you're not, your life isn't determined by your circumstances. And Jaime has learned it helps if you have a whole school cheering for you. Harry Smith, NBC News, Pella, Iowa. Filmmaker Chris Sikorsky is in the final stages of production on a documentary about a legally blind high school wrestler and his effort to win a New Jersey state title. Needing an additional $40,000 to finish the project, Sikorsky turned to crowdfunding and the wrestling community responded, pledging more than $58,000 to the film titled A Shot in the Dark. Wrestling to me is the hardest sport. Honestly, it's the toughest thing I ever did in my life. I think wrestlers are the Marine Corps of all high school or college sports. I think it's the, the greatest sport. If a basketball game gets really, really heated, they might push each other. That's where we start. Can you imagine doing it with, with a handicap or a disability? Or, you know, in Anthony's instance, you know, being blind. Kids never expected it because they were wrestling a blind kid. They thought it would be like a joke. And I got a phone call. We will not be able to accommodate him academically or environmentally. When the new guy became principal, he unaccepted Anthony after he'd already been accepted. Not going somewhere we don't want it. So he's been dealing with that, the haters of the world, because of the way that he has to wrestle. Stop, stop, stop. I hate this school so much. And I can't go here because I'm not 100% perfect. I can't call stalling on your kid is what you're telling me. He's got a disability and it's not fair. I think we have an obligation to treat him as we would any other wrestler. I know it hurts. I've been there. Anthony doesn't really try to hide his blindness. He wants to be independent. He wants to be like any other kid. Inbound! On the way! That's two! That's two! That's two! There's no more. I'm not losing to a blind kid. It's, it, that's not the subject anymore. You are a great wrestler, man. I've been the recipient of a lot of kids upsetting people, and I've also been the recipient of kids getting knocked off. We all got a lottery ticket. My goals for my senior year are to get over 123 wins, to win districts, win regions, and win states. I don't even want to lose a high school match again. Ant Russell, 10 seconds! No doubt in my mind he's got it in him. Right to his back! Right to his back! I plan on being the first blind state champion. If all goes well, Anthony should accomplish that goal. I really don't see why he wouldn't. Come on. Come on.
For more information on A Shot in the Dark or to make a donation, simply head over to the address you see on our screen. On our way to break, here's American University's head coach Teague Moore with a beginner's guide to folk style wrestling. You're watching Takedown, thanks to Barbarian Apparel. Another position in the sport of wrestling is called stalling. An athlete could be penalized if they were avoiding action in the sport of wrestling. That could happen two ways. One, if they're wrestling uh, from any position, neutral or top and bottom, and one athlete is simply trying to avoid wrestling, that could be considered stalling. The other, and the, the one that you'll see most often, is if one athlete simply backs out of bounds. And we'll see that demonstration now by Michael. for generations. No amount of bravery and conviction could end the infected, unyielding rage. And with every battle, the evil grew, changed, evolved. The warriors needed nothing short of a miracle to stop the infection, and a miracle they received. Your body is at war against skin infections and diseases each time you step onto the mat. Protect yourself against the invasion. Defend so, defend what you have built. When looking for a quality pizza, you need a place that makes everything from scratch, using fresh ingredients, 100% real mozzarella. And if you can grab a lotto ticket while you're there, well, lucky you. Casey's, famous for pizza. Right now, get a free two liter with the purchase of any large made from scratch pizza. All right, welcome back to Takedown. Our coverage continues in Raleigh, North Carolina, home of the Wolfpack Regional Training Center, and the next great American heavyweight, Nick Wazdowski. He joins us now. Nick, welcome back. How are you? I'm doing well, Scott. How are you? Good, man. Fresh off your trip from the Uregan in Russia. Uh, perhaps uh, it was more of a learning trip than it was a trip that you will hang your hat on as far as performance goes. What did you learn at the Uregan? Uh, I just need a you know, control some, a uh, few positions better and, and stuff like that. Really, I made a mistake for three seconds and it cost me four points. So other than that, I, I felt like I wrestled pretty well outside of, you know, that couple, couple moments, but it's a tough tournament and, uh, gives you a different, different look into, uh, competition around the world. All right. So let's talk about your transition from folk style to freestyle. How's that going? Uh, going well. Uh, I got got good uh, good coaches and training partners out here in Raleigh, and I, I get up to Penn State every once in a while to work out with those guys. So I think things are going pretty well for me. You're well sponsored. You are sponsored, of course, by the uh, Wolfpack RTC and then Tight Mercury Wrestling Club. How did all that happen with the Tight Mercury Wrestling Club? Uh, Tight Mercury, they've been they've been uh, real real generous to our club they, they've taken on everyone in our wolfpack rtc is now titan mercury and i was kind of the last one to to join but uh very happy to be with them and the support they give us so so if i asked you what your next tournament uh is given the most recent uh happenings what can you identify what that is uh i was planning on going to world cup not really sure what's going on there 100 percent. but um if that's it then that and if not then probably the u.s open U.S. Open, okay. So fan, you obviously have fans out there. Do you stay in touch with them and keep them posted on what you're going to be doing? Uh, I try to. I try to try to get word out to my, my Twitter followers or Facebook. Um, I want your view of one of the greats, uh, collegiately and internationally, Roy Salger, as a competitor, uh, so competitive, very emotional. What is he like as a cornerman and, and as a coach? And specifically, what was he like for you at the World Clubs Cup? Uh, he was he was good. That was the first time, I, maybe the second time I met him. I uh, spent a lot of time with him, learned some things from him. But uh, really gives good insight as to 
from his experience as both a competitor and translating that over to being a coach. And uh, I took a liking to him. He helped me stay in touch. What did he? T- uh, what what what? what- what were the types of things he was saying to you either prior to or during a match? Uh, just just really like just, you know, things that I would ask for in terms of, you know, what's what's going on in the match. Sometimes you lose track of some of those things or just ha- had a good feeling of what, what to what to call out and what was going on from his point of view that, that helped me in the matches. So I appreciate that. And, of course, uh, you had Wayne Boyd there. You had uh, uh, the, the leader of the Titan Mercury Wrestling Club as well. Uh, it's kind of neat to see a whole team travel together, especially to to take on the world and then win the World Clubs Cup. How uh, how gratifying was that for you? That was uh, that was a pretty gratifying uh, trip. Not just uh, winning, but the way Titan Mercury does things and bringing the whole team and really uh, traveling as a unit and as a family and taking care of everyone along the way. It was uh, it was fun and really gracious for the opportunity to do that. So. I do want to talk to you about uh, training partners and things like that. But first, I, I, I want, first of all, congratulate you. You had a winning streak uh, of 26 consecutive months, 88 straight victories. And it was, and the loss that you, you experienced at New York was, was uh, close, a close loss indeed. Uh, you lost to a guy named Kyle Snyder. What's your relationship with him today? Um, he's a fellow Team USA member, and uh, we were just over in Russia, and usually when we're on these trips at training camps, we're training together and learning, so uh, no, nothing nothing bad there or anything. It's a it's competition, and, uh, you know, you, you learn when you lose, and you you got to get ready for big opponents like that, and you learn from them. We're talking with Nick Wisdowski, the former NC State senior, now graduated. What was your degree in, Nick? Parks, Recreation, Tourism. Parks? And recreation and tourism what does that qualify you to do uh, a lot of different things guy uh, i don't have enough time to get into all of them really really diverse and uh really good program here at nc state let's talk about your style and and uh in particular freestyle what do you feel you need to improve on at this point uh there's a couple couple small things in terms of uh just, just freestyle things and staying out of a couple of positions where I'm not too good at and improving in those positions and, and still body position and keeping pressure and stuff like that. Nick Kwiatkowski has been our guest. Nick, what do you want to tell your fans out there? We don't get a chance to speak often enough, but what would you like to tell them? Uh, just, just thanks for the support and, and keep following. Hopefully there'll be, uh, be some more victories and tournament championships in the, uh, in the upcoming future. Nick, it's been a pleasure talking with you in the Nike hot seat today. We hope you had a good time. I know that interviews are not necessarily your most favorite thing to do, but uh, it's always good to catch up. Best to everybody, Coach Pop, Coach Beasley, and, and the balance at NC State. Thank you, Scott. Have a good one. Special thanks this week to our friends at Track Wrestling, Harry Smith, NBC Nightly News, and the entire staff there, the Big Ten Network as well. Be sure to follow us on social media and look for all the breaking wrestling news as it happens, plus the interviews, articles, dual previews, and a lot more, all at TakedownWrestle.com. From our studios in Des Moines, Iowa, I'm Scott Casper. We'll see you next week right here on Takedown.